Mr. President, are you there? Can you hear us? I'm there. Thank you very much for joining us here in the Situation Room. I want to start off by comments that you made earlier today. You said specifically that the ceasefire was over, that it was done. Can you tell us what happened in your country today to support this, to back this up? What is it like on the ground? C ceasefire never stood in first place. Russia never intended to stop fire. Russia's Russian tanks continue to rampage for Georgian towns and villages, killing people, destroying buildings, looting. Um, uh, the setting the camps for internment of people and uh, doing, uh, you know, summary executions of people on the side. They've been doing one worse things what I've heard in the past and I could never imagine happening in my country. And uh, they've been advancing uh, slowly but surely towards the capital, Tbilisi. At the same time, they've been blocking blood lines of supply for Tbilisi. They've shut down our seaports. They shut down the main roads to the capital. They shut down our international airport, uh, and they, they are going to continue to try to strangle our, our uh, struggling democracy. Earlier today, you accused the United States of having language that was too soft. You said earlier on CNN that some of the first statements from Washington were pursued by the Russians as almost a green light for doing this because they were too soft. There was an ultimatum that was given uh, by a Russian official to the United States that said the Bush administration either backs Russia or Georgia. We heard from Secretary of State Condoleezza Rice just moments ago. I want you to take a listen to what she said. As to choosing, um, the United States has made very clear that it is standing um, by the um, democratically elected um, government of uh, Georgia. Are you satisfied with her statement? What more do you want the Bush administration well, to do in terms of support? I never accused the United States in first place of anything. I just said that Russians mistook the, some of the statements at certain level that, you know, for, a, for you know, inability of the U.S. to react to flagrant violation of every international law and any principles of justice. What we've been witnessing for the last days is a brutal, calculated, cold-blooded, premeditated murder by Russia of a small, uh, democracy on its borders and uh, the, what what uh, and you know it's not about Georgia or choosing between Georgia and Russia for the United States it's about choosing whether the US is willing to stand up for freedom not to lose the whole region not to lose Eastern and Central Europe not to lose Central Asia and Caspian and wider Middle East or and succumb to Russian pressure and succumb to never-ending appetites and ultimatums of Militarist, uh, you know, rhetorics in Moscow and of the uh, people who are uh, committing war crimes right now on my territory, and this is a very, very fundamental issue. And this is not about it. Georgia is not like Neville Chamberlain said about Czechoslovakia, and it's uh, in '38 that you know, why should we care about faraway country of which we know very little? Well. They, they gave up Czechoslovakia, they compromised in Munich and the huge tragedy of Second World War with tens of million people that have followed. Uh, now what we have now is, uh, what, what we really have now is Georgia being, uh, you know, Georgia being attacked and I think this is just starting of a big chain of events that might unfold if Georgia falls. Mr. If, President? Uh, for people in, in the West and the world don't stand up for freedom. Mr. President, specifically, you spoke with President Bush earlier today. What did he promise you? What has he said Absolutely. in terms of the United States' help or, or aid to your country? President Bush expressed unwavering support for Georgia's elected government, for our independence and territorial integrity. And there would be no compromise at the expense of our territorial integrity, like there were compromises in the past in terms of appeasing one dictatorship or another uh, that was in the past century. The U.S. was famous for never making such deals. The U.S. The only, is the only big democracy in the world that never went for appeasement and never went for all kind of shady, shady deals. That's the main force and appeal of the U.S. for every small and big nation worldwide. That, that's why my people are so sympathetic of the United States. That's why we had forces in Iraq to fight for the U.S. and people where our people died there, but we never ever asked for extra gratitude because we have common values. We share those values. And what Russia is trying to kill right now in Georgia is not just killing my country and getting rid of me as its president, but it's about killing 
Uh, it's about killing the idea of freedom, democracy, and future for the whole region. And that's, that's, that's a very, very essential dilemma. Specifically, people, President, I spoke with President Bush. He's, specifically, he, he spoke about humanitarian assistance. Yes, yes, yes. As, as well as uh, in, in addition to humanitarian assistance. Uh, was there any desire to, to actually uh, put U.S. forces either at ports or airports to patrol that type of thing beyond humanitarian assistance? Well, Is that well, something you discussed? What, what they've been talking about. What they've been talking about is about uh, delivering humanitarian assistance and opening the corridors by the U.S. Navy and by the U.S. Air Force. And uh, this is humanitarian mission, but this is a humanitarian mission of huge uh, life-saving importance. This is going to save five million people and this is going to save the whole region. And you can never overestimate the importance of this humanitarian assistance. This is not this is not fighting wars. This is about helping and, you know, take, bailing out the people that is in deep trouble, that is being attacked and that is being butchered because they, we want, you know, the bombs that are falling on us, having inscription on them. This is for America. This is for NATO. This is for the West. This is for Bush. And certainly, I don't know what kind of perverse people are doing this, but this is, for them, it's very serious. They really mean it. Have but the spoken? point is that my people is dying. My people is dying under those bombs. Have you spoken to the uh, to the Russian uh, leadership at all, either Medvedev or Putin? They don't speak to us at all. They don't speak to us at all. Why do, would they speak to us? They think they they are killing us anyway. Why would they speak to their victims? Have you reached they, out they, to them? They, they, have, you, have, you like, have you reached out to them? Do you feel that there is any room for negotiation or at least to begin a dialogue? Well, we did our best. So, so far, the, we've done we've done our best. But so far, the only thing we've been getting for them is bombs, is killings is attacks on civilians, is uh, looting, and is uh, very, very offensive, angry rhetoric, basically about killing our independence. And this is absolutely not acceptable. You praised uh, one of the... And you uh, know what? Yes, please, go ahead. You know, I mean, the main idea from them was, you know, we don't discuss anything with you, you just succumb to our pressure, you surrender, and then we discuss something. You give up your freedom, you give up your independence, you give up your elected government, you will give up your territories. Well, our response to them, we don't have 1,200 tanks that can roll into our territory, but yesterday we had huge crowd in downtown Tbilisi, peaceful demonstration saying, we, are, we will never surrender. We will never surrender. That's our message of my people to people who invaded my country. Mr. President, you earlier you praised uh, one of the, the candidates, uh, the presumptive Republican nominee, John McCain, for saying that we are all uh, Georgians. Uh, and then you went on to, to say earlier today that uh, you're looking for more than just words, but some actions here. Senator are, Obama was also made statement, basically. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Support. Uh, Senator Obama was also very supportive. Uh, do, you, do you expect either one of them to be able to do anything at this point? And do either one of these candidates offer something that you believe will move this forward, this, this peace process, or, or, or move this, this, this forward here in terms of the conflict with Russia? Well, I've been talking to Senator McCain several times a day, and he has been very reassuring. He has been really helpful in raising our morale. You know, I think he uh, spent less time on his presidential campaign these days and lots of time in Georgia. And I really appreciate that because Senator McCain has been fighting for freedom of Georgia for many, many years. He understands every issue involved here. He understands what we are punished for. And it's the same for Senator Obama. And uh, I think it's very important to understand that these are still candidates. But every word of support, every word of sympathy, every word of outcry in the world really helps. Because people who are against us, they are ruthless. But, you know, there is no way they should, uh, the, 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 you know, this is to turn the world upside down. And either the world does something about it or the whole world is in trouble without any exaggeration. Because things happening now here, the triggered huge tragedies in the past in Afghanistan in 79, in Czechoslovakia in 68, in again in Czechoslovakia in 1938, in Poland in 1939. These things happened in the past. I'm not exaggerating. This is happening right now here. Either we wake up and look into the eyes of the bitter truth and do something about it, or it will be a never ending stories of increased tragedies and increased uh, human suffering and loss. President Sasha Bailey, thank you so much for joining us here on the Situation Room.